But let's move on now to our second story. Arab leaders are holding their annual summit in Kuwait. But the Arab League member states are already divided over the situations in Syria and Egypt. Syria's seat in the 22-nation bloc remains vacant. Syria's membership was suspended in November 2011. Now Algeria, Iraq and Lebanon are threatening to quit the summit if the seat is granted to the foreign-backed opposition. Meanwhile, the crisis in Egypt is the other bone of contention among the Arab League members. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt are piling pressure on Qatar to stop supporting Egypt's main opposition party, the Muslim Brotherhood. Tensions have been escalating over the issue in recent weeks. Saudi Arabia and Egypt have labelled the Muslim Brotherhood movement a terrorist organisation. Franklin Lam is an international lawyer. He's with us now live from Damascus. Uh, Mr. Lam, welcome to the top five. Let's uh, discuss the division among the Arab League members when it comes to Syria. We're seeing now Lebanon and Iraq among the countries, the Arab states that are saying we're not going to agree for the foreign-backed opposition to have Syria seat in the Arab League. Uh, first of all, how serious do you find these divisions and how has that played out in the Arab League's role in these regional crises? Uh, fascinating question. Uh, you know, uh, it's been six uh, decades and more that the so-called League of Arab States, which frankly has never been much of a league, uh, but they have annual meetings, as you know, from 22, now 22 Arab countries. But they are not now and have not been equipped to deal with serious, tough uh, geostrategic issues. It's great when they have uh, gatherings and they all can drone on many times about, uh, say, the, the core issue, which they claim in their charter is Palestine. But the reality is that nearly uh, one third of those members uh, will do deals any day of the week with the Zionist regime against the uh, uh, Palestinians uh, if it suits their interests and if it pleases the Western hegemonists who have uh, an enormous influence in the Arab League. So I think we can't really expect much of them, but we can still pressure them. Um, surely in a case <clears throat> such as um, the importance of Syria, uh, it was predictable that they would not be able to agree. Some of the uh, majority are supporting the rebels and are funding them and arming them. So, uh, uh, and oppose the resistance, the resistance uh, through uh, Hezbollah and Islamic Jihad and Hamas and others uh, uh, against the Zionist occupation of Palestine. So with all of those divisions, and they are historic divisions, I think uh, it isn't uh, surprising uh, that they're not going to do anything. And one commentator, I think, uh, from Washington today said, the Arab League will be most happy at this session when they adjourn and go home because they're just going to make these predictable speeches. Uh, they're going to delay uh, on any uh, substantive uh, decisions. Uh, and, and that's, I think, what we can say about this. We, can, we, we don't expect much from them. Um, uh, uh, from this session. And Mr. Lam, just quickly before we let you go, you referred to the issue of Western influence in the Arab League. Do you think that Iraq and Lebanon and Algeria, the countries that have, have no, said they're sure. against the foreign-backed opposition taking Syria's seat, these are countries that have made this decision because they're not under the influence of the West? Well, I think in the case of uh, Lebanon that, you know, the resistance here is, is strong, even though I was disappointed, frankly, when uh, Ali uh, Hassan Halil, uh, the Amal movement uh, representative, who was there on behalf of the government of Lebanon, when he took a personal affront and walked out. I'm not sure that was his role. I'm not sure that that helped the resistance. But uh, I do think that that's the case, that those who are allied and are serious about the resistance uh, are somehow different and, and split off from those who want just accommodation and a continuation, more or less, of the status quo under Western uh, uh, influence. Surely uh, there's enormous pressure on them. And the Gulf Cooperation Council, as you know, um, is far away from the resistance uh, um, uh, ethos and uh, culture. So I, I see that as another fundamental 
a problem with the Arab League and this uh, particular uh, gathering. Thank you very much, Mr. Franklin Lam, international lawyer with us there live from Damascus.